Yeah. Unmuted everybody. Nice. So is this the current? Oh, perfect. Thank you. Okay, I'll talk to you later. Bye. Okay, we are we are good to go. Can she yes. hear us a bit? Yeah. Can you see? Does it show that there's one person on? Oh, it does show you how many people. Yeah. It, just, it doesn't show who though, right? It just right. No, it person. just shows like one person. Gotcha. Yeah. Right. So this is the right one. Yes. And this is the right one. Yes. You set that off the pile. Yeah. So here you go. You just stole all my stuff. Is this not your stuff? Yeah. These things? Yeah. Just like the top two. Yeah. That's the new one. Oh, yeah. You guys got a judges? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You have your judges? Okay. All right. We're looking at the 12 to 1 budget forms, y'all. Seven, eight. Yeah. All right. Let's uh. Let's go. Hey. Come on in. No. no hard <laughs> Union. Um. All right. So we'll uh, go ahead and get the, get this started. Call the meeting to order at six oh one p.m. and. Ms. Beach, if you could be roll call, please. All right, Mr. Bray. Uh, present, parent rep. Ms. Gilder. Present, parent rep. Mr. Chubbing. Present, parent rep. Mr. Reddick. Present, parent rep. Principal Lontor. Present, principal. Ms. Serrano. Present, teacher rep. Ms. Sabatka. Dr. Yates. I don't think she's coming. She's not going to be here. All right. Ms. Wilson. Ms. Alexander. Present, non teacher staff group. And Ms. Peach, paragraph. Ms. Yes. Uh, Wilson, um, she did not mention that she's not coming, so. Mm -hmm. uh, um, okay, so we'll move on to the approval of the agenda. Does anyone have anything they want to uh, amend here with this, uh, with the agenda we have at hand? Okay, I have a motion to approve the agenda. Motion. Ms. Beach, anybody like second? 
Ms. Bjork, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Everybody abstain? Okay. The agenda is approved. Um, next is the approval of previous meeting's minutes. Does anyone uh, have anything that needs to be added to that or amended? No? Okay. I make a motion to approve the minutes. Yes, you were. Anybody seconded? Mr. Trevor, seconds. All in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Anybody abstain? Okay. All right, we move on to the principal report and uh, get the floor to Ms. Fox. All right. Okay, everybody, here's our principal report for December. So we're going to go over some updates from last month, talk about budget announcements and celebrations as always. We're going to start with our mission. As we know, all of us are here to make sure that we nurture our kids to be the best versions of themselves through artistic expression and academic excellence. These are our values that ground our decision making. And these are collective, um, developed by the, some parents, students, and teachers. All right, so let's talk a little bit about instruction for this past month. Um, even though November was a quick month, we did have a lot going on. Um, we did uh, go ahead and administer the eighth grade high school admissions test. Uh, we had uh, all of our students uh, take this exam that was previously only something kids would take on Saturdays. Uh, we were successful. The new testing platform is something we're all getting used to. Um, and we will be administering makeups next Tuesday. So for kids that maybe weren't there or uh, didn't get a chance to take the test, they're allowed to take the makeups. Right now we have the middle of the year, which is MOY, TRC, and Dibbles. So those are the literacy assessments that our primary teachers give, kindergarten through second grade. Those are open. Uh, teachers haven't quite started that yet. It's a long window that those are open. They close in January. Um, the STAR assessment, uh, which is the, you guys may have talked to your teachers about this at Report Card Pickup, the middle of the year assessment is coming up in January. So after holiday break is when we'll be administering that. Uh, after school, so we have some after school programs that are started. Specifically, we've got our fifth grade explorers program, as well as our first grade intervention uh, program for after school reading. You know, our first, that first grade cohort was in kindergarten last year, and so they were learning to read at home um, on an iPad. And so we want to make sure that we really support that group of kids. Unfortunately, also, this cohort has been flipped the most this year. So these, these kids have been home. Um, they've been flipped four times already. So um, the first one was a short one, so we weren't home for a long time. But this class really is a, a focus area for us. And we're still doing some problem solving on our instructional leadership team about additional ways and resources that we can use in the building to support these kids to get everybody reading and up to speed. Um, we've got Playmakers for an after-school program. They're a new partnership, super successful. Uh, they are a theater partnership. They meet, and it's a full program. They filled up pretty much instantly um, after school, and they are now meeting in the library in another classroom. They do some creative playmaking and writing of plays and performing of plays with our kids. We did partner with them last year to do, I don't know if you all remember, but we did like a, a video, like a virtual movie during the holidays. And they, they made that for us. And the the movie that they made us was based off of a bunch of children written plays. And so it's kind of like our kids are now writing those plays. So. And then we got science fair this week. So Ms. Robertson is working hard with all of her middle school students to get their science fair presentations ready. So professional development, not a whole lot last month. Um, we had our Teacher Institute Day at the very beginning of November. We um, I'm just tired of writing report card pickups. So our CPU prep, some teachers had about half of the day to prepare for the report card pickup. And then the other half of the day, uh, the instructional, it was really cool because it was like completely led by teachers. Um, members of the culture and climate team led staff team building. And they also led a and modeled uh, talking circle, which is another one of our restorative practice initiatives. And then our instructional leadership team, we had teachers present our grading for equity uh, learning cycle to the staff and read the introductory chapter of that working process. In. And then today, um, Ms. Barrera and I participated in a skyline professional development for administrators for quarter two. 
Um, this is to support administrators in the implementing of this new curriculum in their school. Um, additionally, I didn't put it up here, but today I was at our uh, network group. I was over at Topworm, um, and we were meeting to talk about multi-tiered systems and support. So what other schools are doing to support kids in the wide range they're at right now and, and um, helping to uh, enrich as well as intervene whenever needed. Um, I do to give Barrera a shout out because so that this um, the skyline they have different like badges that teachers get for completing different modules. Barrera has several badges, so she is getting badged out for skyline, and um, she's done a lot of those trainings. So really glad that she's becoming a, a, an expert with that skyline. And then. As far as school culture, I'm going to X this out so I got more space on the bottom. Can you just here? Okay. For school culture, we had the Network Four High School Fair hosted that. Um, Signanovich um, does that every year. To it's a really great event to get kids familiar with different high schools. So it's all the high schools in our network, as well as some other high schools and other networks, have a giant like spreadsheet Google links where they all come together and kids can visit and hear from different high schools. The GoCPS application closes on December 15th. And so it's really important, Ms. Ignatovich and I are working right now to make sure to um, help guide our kids in selecting those best fit high schools for them to apply for for next year. Uh, we had the high school panel. So this little, uh, oh, it's on a different page. Oh, let me show you who's on this page. So this was our high school panel, that picture right there. Uh, we had our freshmen come back and talk to our kids on the stage about their high school experience. I think that was organized that. It's a really great event. It was fun to see all of our alumni come back and then all the middle school kids were there and it was just a really, really great event. We want to keep that going. Um, and so we also want to celebrate our sports teams. So we've got our uh, flag football team, our volleyball team and our cross country, those seasons are all ending. Um, we did really well overall. You know, we've got our fine football team made it to uh, the championships and they, they did get out the first round, but they played really, really well. They played against some hard teams and they beat some really good teams too. So those, our fine football teams are doing a stellar job, both the fifth and sixth grade and the seventh and eighth grade boys. Volleyball team um, also finished up their season. And then cross country, I think I've told everybody this too. They they were second, I think, in the the girls were second in the city. Um, and we had some fast kids too. Like we had a kid that um, Forsman, uh, Carver Forsman, finished I think sixth in the city. Um, Claudia Lubily was I want to say like twelfth or thirteenth. I'm gonna like misstate this. <laughs> can you help me with this? Yeah. <laughs> I think Carver was fifth. Yeah. But, Carver. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, there we go. So mm -hmm. kids are doing a great job running. We have a school of runners. Mm -hmm. Lots of kids love to run, and I can't wait for crap to happen. Um, right now we've got basketball, and we have a lot of fifth and sixth grade boys that have signed up for basketball. Um, not as many seventh and eighth grade girls, but um, we do have a lot of fifth and sixth girls. We have coaches for almost all those teams. We do have a lot of interest in cheerleading. We don't have a coach yet. So if anybody knows somebody that is interested in cheerleading, um, or that would like to coach that, please have them reach out to me or Mr. Drill, because that would be great to get for our kiddos. I know they would love that. Our report card pickup happened. Oh, wait. Oh, Daylane Halloway. Um, she was singing in the Lyric Opera. So um, me and Miss Timley went to visit her. That's a picture of all of us up at the top. We got to see her. She, um, it was the Magic Flute, Mozart's Magic Flute. And she was, um, I think one of the, it was a fairy. But it was great. It was so awesome to see her up on stage, and she's just a fantastic singer. Uh, we also did the tree lighting ceremony. Several of you guys were there. Um, that's the best picture I could get, but that was great. Um, a lot of community was there. We had um, two aldermen. We had some um, speakers from the OTMRA. It was a really, really great event, and our choir sounded fantastic. OTMRA raved about them. Um, it was freezing cold, and they were still able to like sing and project and played the guitar and it was great. Um, we had hot chocolate and cookies. And then um, picture day makeup. So that was today. Uh, we scheduled two makeups because of the the kind of the dynamic nature of this year with kids being out and in. And so um, we had one today and then we'll have a makeup number two, December 13th, Monday is coming up. 
So if anybody didn't make it today or was quarantined today, there's one more chance to get those makeups. Eighth grade pictures are coming up in uh, January. That's off of the slide. Yeah. Oh, report card pickup rate was up 81% up from 62 last year. So that was much better. We still want to get closer to 100% and in the 90s, but it's still a celebration because of the growth. I think the hybrid model was really popular. Um, we had a lot of people who participated virtually. So that was, you know, maybe something to remember for the future. All right. <laughs> Operations. So we had, at the beginning of the year, put some whiteboards in Miss Mom's room as well as our room. And hers were starting to come up. And so they were able to come back and get those fixed for us. We are short on subs. And everybody's short on subs, but it's really, like, we're starting to really feel it this time of year. Um, you know, I've been subbing in classrooms, Barrera's been subbing in classrooms, um, all of our admin team. I don't think, we haven't gotten Alexander in the classroom yet, but, <laughs> uh, but <laughs> you know, like, it's, it's tough right now. And so, um, you know, operationally, we're really stretched thin. Um, and I don't know, you know, we, something I like to do is when we get a good sub, we'll make them like a, like a grab bag that they can have with some, like, Princeton swag to try to get them to be like, oh yeah, come back. And we do have some really good subs that love to come to Franklin, but they are all just in such short supply right now. And we do have some teachers who are, you know, going through some family stuff or might be sick. And so um, that is a challenge for our school right now. So thank you all for your patience with that. You know, I know our second grade classroom has had like some patchwork of people in it, um, including myself who taught math the other day. And, um, you know, um, we were really doing the best we can right there with that. Um, we're at 84% for our student fees, over $20,000, uh, which is great. Um, we're still working on that, but we want to get up to 100%. And when I say 84% included in that are the uh, students who have requested fee waivers or the students who are on a payment plan. Okay. Um, all of our free and reduced lunch forms are in. We're at 100%, which is so much better than last year. So that was, it's easier to get forms in when you're in person. You know? Some sad news. Um, our engineer got a job at O'Hare, so he will be transitioning. Mr. H is going to be transitioning to a new position that we're happy for him. Like, it's great. It's close to his work. Um, he is a really great engineer, so he's going to be dearly missed. Um, I'm working with facilities right now to um, make sure that we get a new engineer um, that is solely dedicated to Franklin. Um, in the interim, we'll be sharing an engineer. Danny is his name. I knew him because he was an engineer at Oscar Mayer, so... Um, he'll be um, bouncing between Oscar Meyer and Franklin right now. Um, and then until we get our full-time engineer. So. And then we also are in the process now. We just posted the counselor position. Uh, Ms. Uh, Ignatovich, a TAT is short for like temporarily assigned teacher. So uh, that is posted and we're going to start uh, collecting resumes for that. The, the timeline that she has is February I think, 7th. Um, is the last we will have her, but we want to go ahead and start interviewing. You know, right now, counselors might be graduating from university in December, and so getting somebody in that position so that we've got a really smooth transition is a priority for us. And then we, this year also, or this uh, week, finished our fire alarm inspection. It is complete. Here's some pictures of our teams. Uh, this is our flag football uh, fifth and sixth grade boys in a huddle at their... This was at, I think, Alcott, and then that was some more, that was the the Franklin, um, that was down in, what's the park that's in Hyde Park? It's escaping right Washington. 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 Washington Park, that was when they had their meet at Washington Park. And then these are our volleyball girls whenever they were at LaSalle. Okay, this isn't that important, but I really <laughs> wanted to share it with you guys. So, <laughs> um, we organized the office closet and it took a lot of work and a lot of sorting through stuff, but the office team, Ms. Alexander, myself, Ms. Barrera, this is what it used to be and now it's nice and organized. Okay. <laughs> it's a big deal. It's a big deal. I, 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 that makes me feel like, I don't know, I really like that. Make me I'm just looking at it. I don't know. You would like walk in there and you would have to go like this because something may fall in here. Mm -hmm. You know, like stuff was stacked up. And that's not all us. Like it was it was kind of that way before we got it, but we didn't do a lot to like make it better. So it is organized and ready to go. 
Right, and then some parent community engagement. Um, tonight we had the city key visit. It was really successful. We had almost 50 families uh, that came and signed up and got that city key. Um, not just families, but it was also open to the community. So we did have it uh, signed out in the OCMRA uh, news blast about it. And we've been, so I've hosted four school tours since our last meeting, um, two in person and two virtually. The virtual ones are much more attended than the in-school ones. And I'm gonna post some more after the first round of, um, of notifications goes out. Um, there, uh, we had our parents, so Parent COVID Task Force has um, been meeting monthly. This last meeting, we've been trying to recruit um, somebody in the medical field, like a uh, either a pediatrician or um, someone that is involved in um, like What's the name of the, I'm sorry, I'm blanking on the name of the doctor that is involved in vaccines and, um, Pamela no, not the name of the doctor, but like, what do you call that doctor? Infectious disease. What did you say? Yes, thank you. Um, so we're, I'm in talks with an epidemiologist right now who's really interested in coming and getting some information out for families who may, may be hesitant. We're not trying to force anything on people, but just having a resource where people can answer questions. Um, and get some information out about um, what that is like for, you know, what are the risks and, and trying to get some information out about the pediatric vaccine. Um, and I found somebody who's interested. So we've been going through like some people that we know and just using our network, but I just found um, Dr. Laura is her name. So we're in the process of um, trying to develop a town hall. We haven't had a lot of town halls this year, and that's not something that I want to let know, but we kind of want to put it on pause just to get the school year launched. Um, but I would like for them to come and have a town hall with the community. Our winter show is next week, starts on Wednesday, runs through uh, Friday, and we will be streaming it live for those of you who don't have children who are in it. Um, there is, we're in full uh, practice mode right now, so next week lunches will be in the classrooms for everybody, and this week we've got kids just going everywhere, you know, practicing during um, any time that they have and doing some runs in the cafeteria. Uh, we had a parent night out in parent yoga last weekend or two weekends ago. It was pretty successful. Um, we have our sing-along coming up, which is the last day before break. Um, we did meet with Paul Alt. Do you guys remember he came last month? And um, we're looking at um, giving him an opportunity to do some optional professional development with our teachers around um, using outdoor spaces and infusing nature into the classroom um, and trauma-informed response. So he was, that was a great meeting. He brought this like architectural rendering model from like the, the work that he did at the high school that he had mentioned. It was really cool. Um, he's a great story, like great at just presenting things. So that's great. Um, and then we had uh, Miss Sprera continues to go to the nut meetings. Um, this last one, there was a lot of people there because of all of the, uh, you know, there's been a lot of activity and like there's been some increased violence, unfortunately, in the neighborhood. And so there was a lot of talks about that. Okay, so on our agenda tonight, we've got uh, two fundraisers that we need to talk about and approve. Uh, this is something that is kind of a new practice for us. We just got back our, you know, when we had our audit, we were dinged on the way that we approved fundraisers. So um, prior, I think we just, I don't know if we did the full approval process for, uh, I, I don't know, because I haven't had a fundraiser yet. So. We did have one fundraiser that we need to like look at retroactively, the TAP Yellow fundraiser. This is funded through FOF, so it's more of like a for your awareness, like this is a fundraiser that we just did. This one's gonna go through the school on um, the student ambassadors yearbook fundraiser. My student ambassadors are gonna take, when we cleaned out that closet, we found a bunch of old yearbooks that, uh, that they wanna sell um, to their peers and for five to $10, depending on which year. And then they want to sell it to raise funds for student events. Hopefully in the future we'll be able to get some dances going or, you know, some the kids really want to dance. So I don't know what that would look like in the era of COVID, but um, looking, you know, we have like the, the mom and me or the me and my guys that the Friends of Franklin works with. Um, and I think the ambassador would like to do one too, maybe more towards the end of the year. So it's to raise funds for that. And then the Tap Yet will fundraiser, it already happened. So, but I wanted to let you guys know about it. 
Um, it, this assists with the eighth graders who need to pay for eighth grade graduation fees. We only had about three kids that did it, but they, they sold a lot of happy apples. Um, and then they were selling them before and after school for two dollars. So, um, you know, as far as like the Friends of Franklin, when they do fundraisers, we will, you know, moving forward, I'll include those in my presentation, but because it's not part of the school, I don't think we have to get them technically approved, but, um, you know, the auditors were like, just included in your LSC minutes. So I'm gonna start that practice as a new practice. Okay. And here's some of our budget summary. So we did spend a lot of money this month because of all of those licenses that we purchased. Um, remember last month we had about $9,000 worth of licenses. All of that comes from this top line, which is the 115, or I'm sorry, wait, this line right here, which is the 370 with the SR funds, okay? We still have some, we still have a lot of money left in that line, about $10,000. Um, and we need to spend that. So something I'm looking at are um, some intervention programs for our primary, some literacy interventions. Uh, right now, teachers are really working hard and there's so much work to be done and we are implementing new curriculum. So I don't want to put it on anybody this year, but if we could look at some things to purchase, um, maybe for later in the year implementation or even looking over the summer to learn more about, that would be helpful. Um, and I'm also going to be talking to staff about additional things that we have. Um, you know, it, it's good to have a little bit, but I also want us to be mindful of, you know, we're coming up on the end of quarter two, so we want to make sure we spend all those funds out before the end of the year. And this is also in the report you And so these are the, what we spent money on this month. We achieved 3,000 was um, we bought 80 licenses for grades two through eight, and that's 3,970. Alexia is a literacy intervention. So this is math and reading. Um, Alexia is a really, really good literacy intervention program. We bought um, a little over 80 of those. Uh, and then IXL is for math. The, the middle school uses, you guys probably have heard this, um, they're already using this, so some of this was renewals. And some of it was purchasing it for other grade levels who hadn't yet implemented. Um, winter showcase supplies. So there was things that we needed to order, um, such as um, you know, costumes, uh, things that they need to put on the production for six seventy nine. Um, auditorium supplies, so like batteries, tape, things to get ready for the show, and then office supplies um, thirty two forty eight. So uh, our internal accounts, we are up because of the student fees to over 200,000. Um, previously, I think we were at like 180 um, funds spent. Now from this though, remember we need to spend, we're gonna be getting a bill um, for about, I wanna say $12,000 uh, for, remember we split at the beginning or at the end of last year when I was doing the budget, there is some money that we're gonna to need to pay to help supplement positions. But um, because we had one of those positions that we normally supplement and um, go part-time, it's not gonna be as big. I think normally it was around like 50,000 and now it's gonna be down to about 12. Um, but that is something that's coming up that will need to come from this account. I, I don't know when it will yet, they haven't reached out to me, but just to keep on our or four or nine. Some announcements. So quarter two health screen reforms are due this Friday. I wanted to, I'm gonna send a, a community email out about parking etiquette. Um, we've noticed a couple of things. Um, some folks are driving and stopping um, and not keeping everything moving. Um, I myself, I'm like a social person at the end of the day, so I like to go and say hi to people, and today I just didn't do that. I went straight to the parking lot. I think I'm gonna have to cut out social hour at the end of the day and start going and policing in the parking lot um, or get Guerrero out there, but we, um, we're we also noticing that those reserved spots that, um, that people pay for from the Friends of Franklin, today we had somebody that parked just straight in front of them, and so three of them were blocked from anybody being able to get in, and then we're also having people park in the spots. 
Um, so we, we're putting out cones and I'm ma making sure that Mr. Uh, Hernandez is doing, making sure to check those cones. But um, we also need to just like be mindful of each other. It's also just not safe to have people parking, like double parking and stopping because kids can't see around the cars. So um, I think it's just time for a good reminder and really putting some eyes and energy on that space. Again, winter shows are next week. Oh, we're gonna have our holiday bazaar, which is really exciting. Uh, the student ambassadors are going to be wrapping. Uh, we've got our donations that are already starting to go down in the basement. And so that will be coming up. So make sure you give your kids some money for that so that they can come purchase some Christmas presents for you. Before we drop off stuff, we can send it in already? Yeah. Um, I wish there was a Friends of Franklin person here. Morgan's in charge of that. I but I saw you can start. Yeah, in the main office. It's a you do in the main Okay. Sounds good. We, we, she brought some stuff in, but I'm like, I don't know if she wants to know what's coming in. I, I'll just put it in the basement and bring it in. So. Thank you. Yeah. And then we, I have started, I'm now a YouTuber. Uh, we have a Franklin YouTube live channel, which we are on right now. Hi, everybody. How many people are on our live channel? We have four people. Hello, everybody in cyberspace. Um, but we're going to be using this live channel for LSC meetings and for like shows and things like that. This live channel um, is on the website, but I don't know. It, it's kind of hard to access the link for it. It's like all the way at the bottom. We just put the the um, the what do you call it? Like the little bar at the bottom, and it's really hard to get to. But also at the top, next to all of our social media, there's a YouTube button that if you click to that, it'll also go to the YouTube live. And it's the link that I also sent out right now. So just so you know, that'll be the same link that we use for the winter show uh, live stream. Oh, can I go back one? Yeah, it did. All right, now some celebrations. Thank you to Jen Higgins. And oh shoot, I forgot Stephanie's last name. I, I forgot, I'm not sure Stephanie's last name, but Stephanie is her first name and she helped Jen whenever we were uh, planning those parent nights. So thank you, Jen and Stephanie. Thank you to all of, we, we got the piano off the stage, uh, which was both scary, but also great. <laughs> um, we had about, I think all of, all, there were some people in here that helped with it. You didn't help with it? Andy, did you help with it? <laughs> we've done it before, though. We've done it before. Yeah. Who's right now on the stage? I don't know who's right now on the stage. I'm glad I'll put it on When they were taking it down, I don't know if Simon, I got to, I was giving Santos a hard time. They were all taking it down. There was like 12 guys around it. And when they're coming down, Santos was like, I need you guys to keep it level. <laughs> <laughs> and they were like coming down like, oh my gosh. Oh, no. But everybody's okay and so is the piano. Okay, so, um, it was a lot. It was like everybody was crying around. So it's off the stage. Thank you. Um, Megan Scully and Barb Lee are going to be helping with the yearbook. Thank you to those ladies. And then we made a lot of money on popcorn this year. We made. Um, we sold 30,000 worth and then we made 15,000, which is huge. So, a special thank you to the Friends of Franklin for that. Um, and Edie Swanson, who organized that. I just saw her going and getting her card today and I like high elbowed her. And um, it was really, I'm just so happy that was, um, those funds are helping us right now with some of the last minute things we need for the show. So, thank you to all you guys. And that is all I have for you all tonight. That is the end of the report. All right, thank you for the report. Um, with specific uh, direction to the report, are there any questions from the uh, LSC? I, I have a question. I was just curious um, with the school fees. Um, I think you said there are 80-some 80, 80 percent uh, participation. Do you know how that compares? Since we increased the fees this year, I was just curious if that is, if you noticed anything or was there an increased number of um, people who needed assistance, or I don't know if you did a comparison. From you know, I I have not compared to previous years. I didn't collect these last year, okay. so I'm not a hundred percent sure about how it might compare to years in the past. Okay. Um, we had about twenty uh, twenty seven. You said that were fee waivers, right? Mm -hmm. And then. Like seven or eight that were on the payment plan. Switch it. 
27 that have expressed interest in payment plans. Oh, okay. And 7, 8 that have requested a fee waiver. Okay. No, that's not bad. Okay. So it seems as if maybe the, the threshold was okay. Yes. Okay. I have a question just sort of about, this is pretty much a me thing, but, um, so the website's different, <laughs> and uh, I need to upload the minutes, and I don't know how to do that oh. at all, so, um, or do I just reach out to, is Sarah? Yeah, I have okay. Sarah up, upload the minutes. So you have, you have doing it somewhere. Oh. Yeah, it's under the LSC section, I think, in a folder, okay. but he can show you. Do that. Okay. I, I didn't know that you did it. I was just. I, I mean, I've it. been. I did it, and then I think I <laughs> dropped the ball last month. But I think as I went on, I'm like, whoa, I don't know how to do this, and I was probably like, oh, I'll figure it out tomorrow, and it didn't happen. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so I used to do it, um, you know, prior. But I can talk to him and see what is easiest for him. Yeah. He's okay. Gonna help you out. Okay. Thanks. I, I, I personally. Okay. We else uh, any questions for uh, the LSC? I have two quick ones. Mm -hmm. I just want to let everyone go for um, first. How tough is it going to be to get a card in here in the in the building? Is there a so good, solid backlog so people trying to apply for jobs in that regard? I don't. I'm not sure. Okay. So we. I will say that um, the person who is now like the facility manager's boss is the same person that I worked with prior to the transition over to the new company that we now work with. Um, and one of the things that I said to my facilities manager as soon as he told me that we were losing our engineer was that um, you've got to get me a, a dedicated engineer. I, mean, I don't want to share an engineer with anybody. And he assured me that one of the promises of our new company that CPS is working with is that every school has a dedicated engineer and I've seen that happen. So I know just from Meyer, um, Dan used to have Lincoln and Meyer and now they've just put him at, like they, there's several schools that have just gotten, and that's an example of one, they've taken the double load off of them and put them on one. But they're still in the process now of hiring. So um, yeah, that's, that's all I know for now. Okay. And then um, the second question I had <clears throat> was regarding the uh, the ESSER funds. Mm -hmm. What's the scope of what you can do with those things? Because I I remember we had a bunch of extra money last year, and we were able to do that STEM camp, mm -hmm. which I can't remember where that money came mm -hmm. from to do that. Mm -hmm. So the STEM camp didn't come directly from the ESSER fund that came from our OST money, which is the out of school time. And that was increased too. So our out of school time was increased, which is why we were able to um, do that summer STEM camp. Now, right now we are looking at, you know, we're bringing in partners to help supplement what we're offering. We have a need for more programming in the primary and the younger grades. And we also use those OST dollars to help supplement coaches. So because in our, um, when we do the, the leagues, we don't play in the CPS league. We play in the league that game league. And so coaches don't get paid through CPS. They get they have to get paid through us. And so we do use those dollars for that. <laughs> um, public have any questions for uh, regarding the principal report specifically? All right. All right, well, thank you. Um, we can go ahead and move on to old business at uh, this stage. Uh, the International Picnic Guest is going to be on there until we either decide to have one or not have one uh, this year. Um, we don't really need to talk too much about that because nothing's really changed. It is December. Uh, secondly, is the Principal Evaluation Committee updates. I, I haven't had a meeting with as of yet. Uh, it's coming up. Um, yeah. But if you want to uh, uh, give us whatever yeah. things you may have, Ms. Bueller. Well, I was just going to clarify um, that any members of the LSC and public <laughs> are welcome to stay. And the LSC can stay, even if you're not on the committee, um, you can stay for the closed session as well. So um, I just wanted to make sure everyone knew that, that even if you didn't 
volunteer to be a part of the committee, you can still stay in the closed session um, if you if you want to stay. And I think for now, it seems as if scheduling it directly following our LSD meeting was the best for everyone to be able to attend in person. So I think we're going to do that um, at least for now. Um, so that's all I have to say. But yeah, we'll be meeting directly following this um, to talk about it more. So. All right, thank you. Um, we're moving right along here. We'll move on to new business. Uh, the uh, only thing on the dock there is to discuss and uh, possibly vote on um, the school uh, fundraisers that uh, uh, that are about to take place and maybe uh, uh, some in the future. So, yeah. we'll be back to floor. All right. So that's the slide that I talked about with the. He passed it. They pass it? Mm -hmm. oh, here we are. Yeah. So this one is kind of retroactive. We already had this one. Um, I will put this on the agenda in the future because we are going to be voting on fundraisers that are posted by the school. Um, so really the one that we're voting on, this is a four-year awareness. This took place, Friends of Franklin slash Ms. Robertson, you know, sponsor this. Um, and then the one we're voting on really is the Student Ambassadors Yearbook Fundraiser. So this is going to start the, they're going to, they want to sell like right outside the show on Thursday and Friday, have the yearbooks out there. And then they want to do before school as well as um, recess. And they will be selling those for five to $10. Funds will go to a student culture event that they would like to plan or thinking it's going to be a chance if we are able to do that. I don't understand the year book. Are we talking like just the past five years old books? Yeah. Okay. So then <laughs> the kids here will have an interest in the coach. That's why I was like being in the 1970s. <laughs> <laughs> That's a really old closet. I can't figure it out. I can't figure it out. The words. <laughs> um, all right, so I have a question about this. So you, you said something, and I don't think I quite got it. Mm -hmm. uh, there are Prince Franklin fundraisers, LNC fundraisers. Mm -hmm. Most of the fundraisers are going to be a whole lot of fun. This is specific one. This one's going to be, it's my group that's sponsoring the it. Doing this one. Yeah, so the, the money from this one is going to actually go through internal accounts, which is why we need to vote to approve it. The Friends of Franklin one, or not the, the Taffy Apple one, isn't touching any of the school accounts. It's more of like for your heads up, like they're doing this, we're going to have money awareness of this. Um, so I'm just letting you know that that one happened. Um, but also, you know, then it opens up the question out of do we need to like, just talk of, I don't think we need to approve, not I don't think, I know we don't need to approve the Friends of Franklin, because that's a whole separate body for a budget. Um, the, the ones that, like the, there's one coming up, the TA creators are going to do in January, February for with the world's famous chop, the chocolate bars. Mm -hmm. Like that will also go through school accounts, so we will also in January need to vote on that. Okay. Mm -hmm. When is that? that when, when, when is the fundraiser for that gonna take place. January. So it'll be our next meeting. Okay. Mm -hmm. well, I mean, should we be able to vote on that right now though? You know we could vote on it right now. I don't have the details for uh, what they're how much they're gonna sell those for. Okay. Yeah, she has not next meeting for And we do need that to make to, to have a vote. Mm -hmm. yeah, okay. Like the information. Okay. We can save it for January. Got it. Will you, um, just to kind of avoid another situation like we had with the tacky apples, mm -hmm. will they be telling us what kind of bars? Like, are they going to be peanut butter bars? You know, like, I mean, that's yeah. just. With the nuts in the bars, that was a concern, right? Right. Yeah. No, whenever we get the chocolate from World's Finest Chocolate, I'm going to request that they do the ball, the, what do you call it, the crunch okay. and the regular chocolate and just don't do any of the nuts. Right. I, I would check the label on the plain chocolate, though. 
The egg is so we made it and up place that has nuts. And nuts in the plain one too. Same with the rice. That's for your, for your children. I the rice too. Yeah. 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 Sometimes it's sad that on the way. Like made in a facility that processes. Had the peanut apples all over the playground. It's all over the playground equipment. And because one of the school classrooms, which was really a sweet idea, bought all their students the apples for a treat and also to support the eighth graders. However, <laughs> they ate them on the playground and so there were peanuts literally everywhere. So that's kind of why I was talking to Ada. My daughter came on and told me um, about it. It's how I knew. And so we were just talking about if you if they're going to be selling, you know, could we just do caramel? Could we just do like Plain chocolate or crispy chocolate, you know, um, yeah. she won't eat them, but as long as like yeah. other kids aren't eating them, because that's the thing, like kids are walking around eating those peanut apples, and it's just like, I don't know. like yeah, super stressful. <laughs> it's like, what is happening? Yeah, um, so that's all. I just like if they're doing food fundraisers, if they could just make sure ahead of before they order them, mm -hmm. you know, that they're being aware of that. I know that people who don't have allergies don't often think about that, so. Um, well, and as a school, I think we always can do, like, we can always be really reflective about, you know, making sure that we're all mindful. You know, we're in a space where we have lots of children that have allergies. Yeah. And so while we can't say we're a nut, we can't say we're, we're a nut for school, but we can have requests that whenever somebody brings in food that they don't have any nuts, um, you know, that it's, we're, we're striving for a nut for space. Can you yeah. restrict the times in which they could be sold? Maybe that would yeah. make a curve. Yeah. Okay. Well, and that 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 was part of the problem. I was like, you know, I didn't know about it in advance, and so it was like, you know, all of a sudden there's just kids walking everywhere after school with peanuts. Yeah. But it's like, you know, they're they're also kids, and they're little peanuts that fly off the yeah. apples, and you know, it's just <laughs> terrible. It's so, um, but Miss Montori will say was awesome and that she at the playground because the peanut protein stays on the surface for they tested in the most the longest it tested is 110 days so essentially it does not come off unless it's washed so she had the playground equipment cleaned and i just want to um avoid that again <laughs> so yeah that's great thanks for um being on top of that well thanks for letting me know about it yeah and the rats are really good in that stuff so. Yeah, I was like, well, maybe the rats. Yeah, the rats. Yeah. Well, uh, I think we can go ahead and go ahead and take this uh, this progress with two vote. Uh, just for a for the minutes, I think we need to make sure that we are uh, making clear that we are. Retroactively on the taffy apples, mm -hmm. as well as proactively on the yearbook. Mm -hmm. Anyone want to make that motion? Motion to approve the retroactive approval of the taffy apple fundraiser. Second. Mr. Trevor, all in favor? Aye. All right. All right. Anybody opposed? Anybody abstaining? Okay. Has passed. And uh, from here, we'll just move on to. Oh, sorry. Anybody left to make a motion to the, approve the yearbook fundraiser that is coming up? I'll motion. Yes. I'll second. Yes, you All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? Anybody abstain? All right, that has passed as well. Okay. Now we'll move on to uh, to public comment section. Anybody, any comments? I do. I actually That's realized good. I should have spoken after the principal's report, but this is my only third live meeting at LC, so I apologize about not knowing the format. Um, but I was, um, I'm happy to be here. Uh, it was nice to see, like, I was just wondering, as an educator, like, thinking about, like, the pandemic and, like, the, the skill deficits. So it was awesome to see. I mean, I'm sad to hear that there's, you know, some intervention that needs to take place for the primary grade, but I thought like, even as a teacher of high school kids, like we're seeing huge, huge gaps in learning. So um, I don't know that's kind of taking place. And then there's other things, but I just want to know if there was, um, I'm so sorry. No, it's okay. I got, I got distracted. Yeah. 
be very little attention to it. Um, if there was any kind of, if there was any kind of like room for like parent involvement in terms of like, also it's like a good time to kind of reflect and kind of move forward in terms of the curriculum and other things and other inter interventions or enrichment programs. If there was like, I, maybe I'm, maybe that the next part of the meeting, but or the next meeting that's going to take place, but if there's any, if there are any opportunities for parent kind of involvement, if not, mm -hmm. like, could we maybe, I, I, I do have to like start something or be a part of something, but to have like maybe some more community kind of conversations about like, it's separate from just COVID, like a COVID parent club, but like, a, not a club, but a, a group of parents who could talk a little bit more about like just the intervention, but more like in terms of the enrichment, in terms of the curriculum, kind of like the next steps of where Franklin will go to kind of continue to be at this, this school. Yeah. You know, one thing that, like, when I heard you say that, there's a couple of things that come to mind. Um, one thing that we are using as an intervention tool are those, like, the Lexia, the, um, the Achieve. That's not the perfect solve of everything, but it's, like, something to help support. And one thing that I was talking to a first grade parent about was um, allowing even the younger grades now to take home some devices. And I wanted to, like... I would love to have some parent volunteers who help to take on maybe leading some learning around using those those kind of um, intervention resources at home. And then I love the idea. I think in the past we've had parents like in younger grades who will come and volunteer in classrooms and do things like sight words with kids and, and flashcards and things like that in the classroom. And I, I would love to get that started again. Uh, the only things we have to make sure that we follow the COVID protocols and that we, um, we've got to re up the amount of volunteers we have who are level one certified because you have to be level one certified to do that with kids. Um, and then, yeah, no, I would be I would be really interested in that. We actually, uh, did we mention that in a grade level meeting, Mr. Rare, a couple weeks or this week about, we used to have some parents that would come in and like, we do we have some for coming in? Yeah. Especially right now, I have mm -hmm. someone that's consistently in third grade. Yeah. yeah. Or what grades were you thinking about? For well, like, less so in the interventions. It seems like that's kind of covered. Like there's the mm -hmm. programs that you've kind of covered in like the mm -hmm. the first grade intervention, but also then it's kind of be thinking about like curriculum in terms of like choices of text for history and English. Like yes. if there's, and I don't know if that Skyline program maybe addresses more of that, but if there was more like. And maybe like it's just a lack of awareness as a parent. I don't really know what that program is and what it involves. So like maybe either like maybe getting some information or if there's opportunities for parents to volunteer or to have conversations or to be a part of that process of like what text will be adapted for, you know, kindergarten versus fifth grade versus eighth grade and um, kind of, you know, having those conversations and like maybe be able to work with teachers or other yeah. other members in the community, but I think like that one great thing about Franklin's is a lot of like, parent involvement if they know what the programs are. So maybe trying to, if, I don't know if that already exists or if there's an opportunity for something like that to exist. It doesn't already exist. Okay. But okay, I'll good. say, you know, the, whenever we are in the CIWP writing season, that's a really good time that, you know, if you're interested or we have parents who because I have some other parents too that are middle school parents um, who are educators as well, who um, had expressed an interest about that to me. And I told them that whenever it comes time for CAWP, I would love for them to be on as like parent representatives, because that doesn't have to be LSC members on that CAWP committee. That can be um, parents too, and we do have a lot, we're like blessed with a lot of parent educators who are also teachers in other places. So, um, that's one way to get involved, but I'm trying to imagine what that might look like even outside of that. Um, you know, like in schools, there's right. the ILT and the PPLC and things like that. Um, what is CIWP or CIAP? The Continuous w Improvement Work Plan. Okay. So <laughs> those are the, like, that's part of the reason why we're focusing on restorative practices and uh, grading and assessment because um, it's like a two year cycle. And so when I came in last year, I inherited, it was written before me. Um, and so, but there was like five priorities, you know, so we're really hitting, um, it was like instructional, developing teachers and instructional leaders. There was sort of practices, there was long-term instruction. And I think um, 
I'm like putting myself on the like, priorities and kind of thing. But there's there's several of them. We really only want to focus on two or three things a year, um, so that we can do them all. You know? right. But um, it's interesting you mentioned social studies because I do think that that's an area that we need to look at a little bit more, especially in like our um, primary and intermediate. Um, you know, thinking about what might be of something that is uh, like a cohesive like vertically aligned program. Um, and I know that there's a lot of changes, too, um, in that social studies. The social studies guideline that I've heard is really great. We talked about it this morning when I was at my meeting with the other principals at Hawthorne. Um, but I don't want to, like, adopt. Uh, we did literacy first, you know, like, right. literacy first, and then maybe look at something like social studies for this guideline. Um, so, yeah, no, I, would, I would be really interested in talking with you a little bit okay. more about that. The Miglietas were the other family that was interested um, in that. Okay. Miglietta and um, Miss, his wife, Lindsay Smith. When, what is the cycle for the CIWP? When does that start again that you'll start writing it? Um, this is supposed to be another year, this upcoming year. So um, I haven't heard much from downtown about like getting those people together. I imagine that... We'll hear it start to hear more like February, March. For is that usually when you did it last year, right? Yeah, it's usually in the spring. And yeah. there will be a parent, mm -hmm. so there's mm -hmm. a mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. So it'll be written this year for the next two years? Mm -hmm. Correct. Mm -hmm. okay. I don't know if I could just hop in there, but with um, Skylight, as the teachers are learning it, we're learning it as well. And I do envision something like a literacy night where you could maybe um, teach the, the parents what this looks like. But again, I would envision that maybe next year once we've got our solid. Okay. Yeah, I would love to like help or volunteer do it. What do you mean? Awesome. That would be really good. Yeah. And I, I would love to too, like with the um, if we were gonna do like a town hall or something around, um, I'm thinking more about those platforms that we just purchased this year to really get people involved at home and getting their hands on those and helping them out. It's not a solution just to put it on a computer for everything, but those some of those programs are research based and even the district uses them for like summer school. Um, the district uses it cheap for summer school, so it's not perfect, but it, it does um, get the job done in some aspects. Okay, thank you uh, for your question. Um, any other question comments from board? Okay. Well, we can uh, move on to uh, set a uh, date and time for the next meeting. I have no idea. January 5th. January 5th, there you go. 2022. I didn't know that's closing. I said, I remember because that's my closing. My closing? Uh, okay, so January 5th. Um, we're, back. we're back in session at that point. At 6 o'clock. And we don't really have anything else to, uh, we have no new business. The old business looks like it's going to be the same. And will there be another principal evaluation committee meeting that day as well? Um, I, or are we doing that every other month? I don't know. I think that's something I wanted to talk about. Um, In that meeting? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Forgot I said it. Forgot I asked <laughs> All right. Um, Hands off, sir. All right. <laughs> sorry. Sorry to be yeah. extra in that way. Well, I just want to get around this. But... <laughs> <laughs> All right. Great. Uh, anybody would like to make a motion to adjourn the meeting? Motion to adjourn. Ms. Alexander. Anybody <laughs> second? Second. Mr. Trevor, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. 657. Got another hour of this stuff. Here? I want to say that the YouTube is uh, working well. I just made it all. Did you hear it? Yeah. No, no, no. Yeah. I got it on my phone. I got it. It was on my phone. You don't have to. Several things. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
shut it off and then we record on, record the, phone. on the phone. Okay. <laughs> and then we'll shut it back on or we'll turn it back on. Whenever. Is there like a dedicated secretary for the for so wait, do we need to stay We're gonna vote on that. Yeah. Okay. So glad I'm here. <laughs> I'm not going to be at the next meeting. So <laughs> yeah, that one. Cover it. Okay. Nordstrom, right? Yeah. I have the anniversary. Yeah. 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 Ye
Motion to approve the agenda, or does anyone have any changes they'd like to make? I didn't come up. <laughs> you can share with us. Oh, um, <laughs> uh, uh, didn't we, we kind of discuss this just a little bit? Sorry. Yeah, it was emailed. It was emailed, yeah. We want to. Uh, no, we're not changing it because, right. yeah, because you can stay for the board session. You don't have to put a public comment before we go to close. Oh, yeah, basically. Yeah, let's do that. Just, uh, have any questions? So I, I would motion to um, amend the agenda and move the public comment before we go into closed session. So I don't know if that goes. We switch four or five on the uh, agenda here altogether. Or do we put it, do we, put, do we get rid of five completely? And go uh, make that 4B and then 4C be closed session. Uh, sorry. You make this more complicated. I'm trying. My, I'm trying my best to make this complicated. Uh, the motion as possible. is to amend the agenda to move the public comment to be closed session. That's correct. So moved. All right, great. I'll second. <laughs> okay. Can I have another call? You got to call all in favor. Okay. You're running this. Uh, <laughs> all in favor? All right. All right. Okay. All right. Um, so then let's move into new business. Um, and we're going to go ahead and discuss slash vote on the principal evaluation committee meeting structure and officers. So uh, let's go, let's start with the officers. Is there, um, with the two uh, roles is just chair and Secretary. So, 
I move to appoint Bueller chair. Okay. I second. Okay. <laughs> and secretary? Well, we need to vote on it. Yeah, probably sorry. I'm <laughs> <laughs> flying. Hold <laughs> on. Uh, we're, okay, motion. I mean, um, vote. You know, Ms. Lee Cruz? Okay. Aye. 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 And then um, for the secretary. And on the next one, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm, no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Here, I'll do it. Okay, okay. but it, I mean, do you want me to be here now? Yeah, you can go. All right, so you can nominate me. I nominate Ms. Peach. All in favor? Aye. Thank you. Um, no. No, Okay. Hold your back. All right, so then for these, just to kind of talk about the structure of of the committee meetings and what we did last year, this is just kind of an open um, conversation, what we did last year and what we maybe would like to do um, this year moving forward. So last year um, we met on March 9th, we had a principal evaluation and survey discussion. Uh, well, actually before that, um, It's on February 23rd, we had a meeting like this one where we decided the officers and the structure. And then on March 9th, we talked through the principal evaluation as well as talked about um, having a survey for teachers and uh, families of Franklin. And then on April, we presented the survey to the board for approval. On May 5th, we um, filled out the evaluation form and reviewed the survey results. Um, that was as a full LSC board. And then we um, completed the evaluation at the end of May. So we met as a standalone committee, we met twice. Uh, we are starting earlier than um, last year, which is good because we did want to, as discussed previously, wanted to get that survey out to families and teachers earlier uh, this year than last year. So we don't overlap with the uh, My School, My Voice uh, survey that goes out. So I think we're doing well as far as that goes. Um, so really, I think the point of, I think we should have at least one or two more additional standalone meetings. One to discuss, um, to kind of just walk through this survey with Ms. Wantor, and what we do is um, we fill it out as committee members, and then Ms. Wantor also does a self-evaluation, and we just discuss. And the point is really just to kind of see where we're at, kind of a self-assessment as well as a group um, assessment to really, and the whole idea is to just support Principal Wantor throughout this year and make sure that um, she has the support as well as the awareness of the LSC. The uh, principal reports also are taken into consideration to a large part. I mean, that's where we get the bulk of our information as far as how you're doing um, on a regular basis, which your reports are, are very thorough and um, very well done. So that, that definitely helps us. Um, and then the survey is just to give teachers as well as families an opportunity to um, anonymously give feedback. And we do have to get those surveys approved by CPS Legal, and they do have to largely have the same language as the official evaluation form. So that's what we did last year. Um, and I think that it, it went, you know, it was fairly well received. Um, I forget what the participation was on the t shirt. I think it was a little low. Um, um, but that's not necessarily a terrible thing because people are really unhappy. They want to make sure they pull it up. 
Yeah, you know. So um, we also talked about how people knew last year. Yeah. It was in the middle of COVID. Like there was a lot of so much going on. I right. can see how it yeah, I'm still through the press. I um my big was survive and I can be better about reminding people, um, especially to you know that we're in the building, it's a little easier. Um but yes, I do know that people were very happy to some people express to me that they were really glad that we were doing a concert that was not so. okay. Yeah. And um okay, so in summation, I think um two more standalone principal evaluation committee meetings. One to just talk through the evaluation as a committee. Um, Self-evaluation plus we would fill it out as well. So that's the next one would be that. And then the following one would be to um, what we did last year as well was we actually went through these and Principal Wander actually told us what she wanted feedback on, which was really helpful. So she actually highlighted specific areas that she would love to know what people how people were feeling about. So we'll probably do that on the second standalone and kind of craft the survey to um, just everyone's input. The teachers were also great at saying um, areas that they felt should be included. And then I'll go ahead and submit that to legal. And then um, the last two will just be presentations to the full LSC. So two more um, standalone meetings. Does that sound? Can you revisit? Sorry, I'm doing this too. Excuse me. Oh, <laughs> I have to put like the. the... <laughs> you can go through and edit mine out. I'll let you know. So <laughs> you're saying the first one is to, the second one is to craft the survey. Yes. And you tailor it a little bit. Yeah. Right. But what was the first one? Sorry. The first one is, um, Principal Wantor will take the evaluation form. She'll give herself a self evaluation, and as the committee, we will also go through and give evaluation. Um, and it's just kind of a check-in, like we're halfway through the year, how are we doing? Um, what are some areas that maybe we could improve on? What are areas that are doing, going really well? Um, so that, that will be kind of the, the focus of that one. And I'm thinking that it would be good to have that meeting Quarter two ends in February. Or I'm sorry, in the very end of January. Really? Yeah. Already? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Quarter two is done. Um, like the last day I think is January 30th. Okay. And then the beginning of quarter three is like the first week of the first month of January. Okay. So it's with uh, the, 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 the LSC meeting is on the, the second, by the way. The second of January? February. And the, yeah, so we've got January 5th for the next. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. February? I think February 2nd. February. When does the evaluation need to be submitted? I believe it's what, April, right? It's the end of May. End of May, okay. Yeah. Yep. And you know, off the top of your head, when that my school my boy surveys. So it's the dates haven't been shared yet. It's generally for in quarter at the beginning of quarter four and the quarter three beginning of quarter four. Which is what month is that? Um April. Okay. okay. I think so, yeah. Let me see if I can pull it up. I think that's right because on April 17th we presented the survey to the board for approval. So it must have been around in the middle of April that we sent it out. So yeah. Okay, so then let's um so let's meet then February 2nd and March the March meeting. Um whatever date that one is. The right. LSC. March 2nd. March 2nd. March 2nd. Um, to do the survey. And then we can get it out later in March. That can be the goal, late March, get that out because it's two weeks through the goal. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, 
And that will give us enough time to review the survey and present it to the LLC the beginning of May. And then um, fill out our evaluation as an LLC the end of May. Okay. So, any other thoughts? Does that sound good? Sounds okay. great. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Okay. All right, then I guess should we make a motion to approve? Well, would that be the end? Or make a motion to approve? The dates of the meeting. The dates of the meeting. I guess that would, that would probably go. Yeah. Yeah, that's that date. Nice mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. We won't have much to talk about by then, so it's good. What's that? We won't have much to talk about at that point, so first we already yeah. talked about that. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> same. There you go. All right, then, any other questions or comments from the committee? Or else? No? Okay, then I think we'll open it to public comment. Any? No. <laughs> okay, um, then, in that case, I think we make a motion to go into closed session. Motion. Anyone second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Say look, now I got any of it. <laughs> <laughs>